You don't need an education. Wisdom is not some academic thing. Wisdom is a spiritual thing that can only come from one source, and that's from God himself. And God, the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not men. And if you want a boatload of wisdom, God will just dump it right on you. Won't even ask for, a, won't even ask for an invoice or a receipt. Won't even ask for a tip. He'll just give it right to you as much as you want. And you can have it and stop living a foolish life. You can make your life count for God. sheep just grazing in the field that's been provided i follow close behind the one who's led me all this way he watches o'er his tender flock with vision undivided providing everything we need with mercy and sheep along this winding narrow road through grassy fields and shady pastures by the rivers flow i'm not driven down this path i trod i follow him by choice i don't need to see the way ahead i only need to hear the shepherd's voice. He speaks in quiet, peaceful tones with love and compassion. Guiding every step I take, I know I'm in his care. Though the path is dark and dim, I'll follow his direction. I will not fear what lies ahead, for I know he will be there. The shepherd leads his sheep along this winding narrow road, through grassy fields and shady pastures by the rivers flow. shepherd's voice I don't need to see the way ahead I only need to hear the shepherd's The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And tonight I want to talk to you on the theology of a fool. I, uh, when I was a little boy, I remember that uh, the urban culture was walking around calling everybody a fool. You a fool, man. And everybody in Atlanta growing up was calling each other fools. They were also saying your mama jokes. That was, uh, that was really good days. Amen. And I love a good your mama joke, even though they're disrespectful. Amen. So, um, so I, I saw one the other day. And uh, can, I, can I tell one real quick? No? Okay, never mind. All right. Um, that got real weird. Um, but everybody's calling each other fools. And I started looking in the Bible about fools and what is a fool. And I come up with this definition. A fool is one who refuses God's wisdom and chooses to live their own way. That's one who refuses God's wisdom and chooses to live their own way. The first mention of the word fool in the Bible 
David was on the run from Saul and he snuck into Saul's camp and stole something while Saul was sleeping. And uh, afterwards, Saul woke up and realized that David got him and realized uh, that he was wrong. And he said this, he, he cried out to David across a canyon there. And he said, I played the fool. And he was wrong. And he sure he was wrong. That's the first mention of the word, word fool in the Bible. But the common mention that everybody seems to quote is the phrase, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. And that's pretty common in the Bible. But I started looking through the book of Proverbs and I looked at every time the word fool or foolish or fools was mentioned. And I came up with five categories of fools. And uh, when God calls you a fool, you're a fool. Now it's hard for me to look at somebody and say that's a fool, unless they're wearing like a Louisville hat or something like that, then that's pretty easy to identify them. And uh, I thought I'd just say that. Where's Sean Blankenship? Hey, what's wrong with you, man? You're supposed to back me up. This guy's backslid. Pray for that man. But you can't always look at somebody and tell that they're a fool. But what you can do in the Bible is you can look at behaviors and see what the Bible says about a fool. And I'm going to give you five behaviors tonight of a fool in the book of Proverbs. And I want you to get your fingers ready, all right? Let's go to Proverbs 9. And uh, let's look in verse number 13. Maybe you want to write these things down. I don't know. But the first thing that I see, the first characteristic of a fool in the Bible, number one, is that a fool has a big mouth. A fool's a big mouth person. Always talking. Always running them lips. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs 9, 13, a foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. Now that, you're not supposed to say anything negative about women in today's society, especially if you want to live a long time, and especially if you want to have a happy life. But the Bible says some negative things about women. The Bible says that if a woman is a fool, then she's clamorous. What does the word clamorous mean? It means she's loud and demanding. She's always, hey, eh, at her husband. She's always yelling at people. And she says, I want it now, I want it now. Like a little toddler. That's the mark of a grown fool woman. Is everybody okay today? I've got 40 references and that's the first one. And uh, so... How do you know if a woman's a fool? The Bible says she's clamorous, meaning she's loud. She's demanding. She has to have the nicest things, even if she can't afford them. She'll just go into credit card debt for the nicest and prettiest thing because she has to have it. The Bible calls her a fool. Go over to Proverbs chapter number 10. And let's see here. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse number 14. The Bible says, Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. Do you see that the Bible says that the mouth, the, the fool, has a big mouth? Go with me to Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse number 7. The Bible says a fool's mouth is his destruction and his lips are the snare of his soul. Meaning that a fool is always talking and always saying things that they should not be saying. Always interjecting their opinion into situations that they have no business even talking about. Can I tell you this? If you're 20 years old, don't start telling people about how to raise kids. Shut up. Shut up. You don't know you're a fool. And by the way, if you're one of these people that you're borderline anorexic, don't go around telling people how to lose weight. Shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. And if you're really fat, don't tell people how to lose weight either. Amen. So. But a fool's always telling people things, always interjecting their opinion into situations 
they don't know what they're talking about. Can I tell you this? Don't tell him how to pastor a church. Shut up. That's how, well, y'all ain't liking this. Well, preacher, you ought to be doing this. Have you ever pastored before? You ever had to manage a bunch of heathen Baptists? Moses went to Mount Sinai one day and said, Oh, God, kill them all and let me start over. That's how some preachers are sometimes. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs 19, let's go there. A fool has a big mouth. Proverbs 19 verse 1 says this, Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. You see the connection there? He's got a big, big mouth. Proverbs 29, let's go there. In verse 11, Proverbs 29 verse 11 says, A fool uttereth all his mind. <laughs> You be, look, I, people say, I'm going to go give him a piece of my mind. You better be careful with that. You might not have any pieces left after it's all over. Amen. I'm going to go tell it, it, it. Look, hey, wisdom says be quiet. Wisdom says hush sometimes. But the Bible says a fool uttereth all his mind. Matter of fact, go to Proverbs 29 and verse number 20, if you will. The Bible says, seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? There is more hope of a fool than of him. So number one today, the, the fool has a big, big mouth. Number two, I'm going to show you this. Matter of fact, let me, let me stop right there. Can I give you an illustration real quick? I was thinking about Dr. Runyon the other day. Dr. Runyon taught me a lot, was the guy I got started with under ministry. Dr. Runyon told me about this singing family out there in the mountains of North Carolina. He said that they had God's power on them and they, boy, they could, boy, they could sing and God's glory would come down. They were a blessing to a lot of people. But he said that uh, they had a problem. The wife of the family couldn't stop gossiping about everybody. They'd go at one church and they'd sing and be a blessing. And then she'd go to the next church, number two, and she'd tell that church what she didn't like about the first church. And then she'd, after church number two, she'd go to church number three. And she'd tell church number three what she didn't like about church number two and church number one. And then she'd go to church number four and she'd tell that church what she didn't like about church number three and church, no church number two and church number one. And eventually people stopped calling them because they didn't want this woman coming in the church finding fault and going blabbing her mouth to everybody. Truth be told, there's a lot of preachers that they're good men. They love God, got a big heart, but they got a big foolish mouth and they spread gossip they say things and spread business around shouldn't be spread around. And the Bible says that they are a fool. God said it, I didn't say it. Let me give you number two if you go back to Proverbs chapter one. This is going to be like a typewriter. Just go through the book, go all the way back. Go through the book, go all the way back. Amen, that's what it's going to be like. Am I telling you what the Bible says? <clears throat> Y'all didn't, didn't respond to that one. Number one, a, a fool has a big mouth, but I was surprised at what the Bible said about this. Number two, the Bible says a fool is bad with money. A fool is really bad with money. The Bible says, Proverbs chapter 1 and verse number 32, the Bible says, For the turning away of the simple shall slay them. Notice this, check this out and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. There are a lot of documentaries out there where people tell the story of how that they were living in a trailer somewhere and then all of a sudden out of nowhere they won the lottery really big. Five years later they say that it was the worst thing that ever happened to them. Matter of fact I would say that Quite frankly, a lot of people, they tell on their moral character by how they handle money and how they treat money. Matter of fact, go to Proverbs chapter 21, if you will. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse number 20. The Bible says this, there is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man spendeth it up. 
Many that a, a foolish man makes $50,000 a year and he spends $50,000 a year. That's what the Bible says. It says a foolish man spendeth it up. Um, matter of fact, I want you to see this. Just hold your place in Proverbs. We're going to deviate. Go to 1 Timothy chapter number 6. It's another instance of the word fool. Hold your place there. The Bible says here that covetousness is a sin. There are people out there who, who wish that they were ultra rich and ultra wealthy, uh, but that's not what the Bible says. The Bible kind of paints a negative picture about all that. First, first Timothy chapter six and verse number nine, the Bible says this, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lust, which drown men in destruction and perdition. I want to tell you, the key to, this under, to understand this verse is verse number nine, they that will be rich, meaning that those who are seeking and desiring and wanting to be ultra wealthy, the Bible says that many of them fall into a temptation and a snare. Now there's nothing wrong with having money. I mean, if you go start a roofing company and God blesses it and you honor God with your substance and it takes off, does well, praise the Lord. Just remember me when you come into your kingdom, amen. Uh, but the desire to seek and look at all that and say, I want that. A lot of those people have to do crazy things. And the Bible says there, they fall into many foolish and hurtful lusts. And if you don't believe that, go look at that, the life of the average Hollywood star. They end up in rehab. And if you, if, look, if you want to follow all that, go follow all, all that. But don't be surprised if you end up like Charlie Sheen out of your mind and having lost your very soul trying to chase the riches of this world. Go with me back to the book of Proverbs here. Is everybody okay tonight? I need a vote of confidence. I don't feel very good. Brother Sean didn't back me up on the Louisville dig that I made, and I'm really nervous about that. So I, I figured, you know, I, I wrote that down just for you, brother. You didn't even say nothing. I'm so, kind of disappointed. Hey, well... Number one, a, a fool has a big mouth. Number two, a fool is bad with money. Number three, a fool is a burden to their parents. A burden to their parents. Proverbs chapter 10, go there with me. Proverbs chapter 10, verse number one. The Bible says the Proverbs of Solomon a wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Heard a preacher not too long ago preach, and he said, how heavy is your mama? You can laugh at that. <clears throat> your mama's so big, well, we can't do that. Anyway, y'all done said no. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Go with me to Proverbs chapter 17 and verse number 6. Excuse me, verse number 16. The Bible says, Wherefore is there a price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom? Seeing he hath no heart to it, meaning that, uh, that they have no desire for wisdom at all. They don't want that. As a matter of fact, let's connect that to verse number 25. It says there, a foolish son is a grief to his father and bitterness to her that bear him. My wife t tells me all the time that when she would go out as a young woman, all they had, uh, my wife comes from a family of three girls, when they would go out, her daddy would say, you represent the Lord, you represent this church, and you represent this family. So whatever you do is a reflection on all of us. And truth be told, that's what a lot of young people don't understand. They think they can go off and live in sin, and they don't understand the reproach that they're bringing upon their own mom and dad. They just think about themselves. David, when he sinned with Bathsheba, he wasn't thinking about nobody but himself. He wasn't thinking about Bathsheba's husband. 
she, he wasn't thinking about the kingdom. He wasn't thinking about Samuel. He wasn't thinking about the nation of Israel at all. He was thinking about one thing. That was himself. And he didn't care who he hurt. He, he was going to he was going to destroy Bathsheba's husband. He was going to destroy the entire nation. And a man of God had to go in there and rebuke him so he would come back to his sanity. But a lot of these fools, they don't care about anything but themselves. Matter of fact, let's go to Proverbs chapter 19. I want you to see this verse number 13. The Bible says a foolish son is the calamity of his father and the contentions of a wife are a continual dropping. I won't, leave, I won't say anything about that one. Drop, 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 drop. That's what that Bible, that's the Hebrew version of that verse right there. A foolish son is the calamity of his father. I spoke to a pastor in Midwest the other day and he, uh, he's been through a rough road in the ministry. He's had a few nasty splits and he had some teenage boys had to go through that together with him. And it was rough on those teenage boys and a lot of old nasty deacons are going to have to answer for, to God someday for what they've done to pastor's kids. But he told me, he said, uh, I called him. I said, how are you boys? And he told me they're not doing real good. They had gotten of age and had went off to Bible college. And while they were there, they dropped out of Bible college and stayed in that area away from home. Started getting a job working at a secular company. And got out of church completely. They don't want anything to do with church because of the hurt they've had to go through. And he told me this. He said, uh, he said, John said, I have no greater joy than see my children walking in the truth. And he told me this, but Brother Spencer, I have no greater burden than to see my kids walk away from God. Those boys don't care about their preacher daddy. I understand. I understand. Look, I want to tell you what happened. People don't get hurt by preachers. They get hurt by unqualified men standing in the place of a pastor. I'm going to say that again because I want you to get that. People don't get hurt by a preacher. They get hurt by an unqualified man pretending to be a preacher. A real man of God and a shepherd is not immoral. He's not dragging a church through a scandal and he ain't going around abusing people. He's a good man, a gentle man. He's a kind man, a godly man. And by the way, let me say also, people are not getting bad doctrine from a real preacher either. There's so many of these people online I see now, they're, they're victims of IFB churches. First of all, I don't even like the phrase IFB. That's stupid. I'm an independent Baptist is what I am. And they're not hurt by IFB. There is no such thing. They were hurt by charlatans pretending to be Baptist preachers. That's exactly right. But the Bible says that a fool is a burden to their parents walking away. Let me give you number four real quick. Can I review real fast? Number one, a, a fool is a big mouth. Number two, a fool is bad with money. Number three, a, a fool is a burden to their parents. But number four, a, a fool is what I would call bullheaded. Bullheaded. That's an old phrase we used to use when I was growing up, meaning you can't tell them nothing. You, they don't listen. They don't listen at all. Proverbs chapter 12, go there with me. Proverbs chapter 12, in verse number 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. Let me tell you what a fool does. A fool comes to people around the church and says, I have withdrawn my 401k and I'm going to put it all in Bitcoin and I'm going to get really rich. And someone says, I don't think that's a good idea. And they said, nope, I done read the internet. The internet done told me this is the next gold rush. Bitcoin, I'm going to put all my money in that. And then next thing you know, they're working at McDonald's at 60 years old. But you can't tell them nothing. 
They don't listen. I have had a mild, a little small, mild amount of success on YouTube. And now I'm getting people calling me saying, hey, what do I do on YouTube? And I'll tell them, guess how much they do of what I tell them? Zero. And guess what their channel is doing? Zero. And if I say, hey, you ought to do this instead, here's something you ought to do. This is not working. This is, this is dumb what you are doing. They get mad. What do I know? A, a fool is bullheaded. Can't tell him anything. Proverbs chapter 15. And verse number 5. The Bible says, A fool despiseth his father's instruction. Meaning that just the idea of coaching them and saying, hey, you know, here's a suggestion. Here's something you ought not do. It just makes them mad. How dare you tell me? Can I tell you this? I, the older I get, the more I realize I don't know it all. You know, you know who the people in the church who know everything are? They're the people who are young and have never done anything. If you, want, if you want to know something about something, go find somebody who's young, who's never done anything meaningful in their life, and they know it all. They're, they're fools is what they are. I would say stupid, but that's not in the Bible. Amen. Proverbs 17. A fool is bullheaded. Look in verse number 10. The Bible says that a reproof entereth more into a wise man than a hundred stripes <laughs> into a fool. Meaning that a wise man, you can say, hey, you ought not do this. Guess what? They say, okay, and they quit doing it. But a fool, he's going he's gonna to literally, I remember when I was a little boy, we were doing some remodeling downstairs in a basement. My parents were trying to sell a house, and they took some sheetrock off, and they had to redo a power outlet. And I remember looking at that power outlet, and there just happened to be a spoon for some reason right there next to that power outlet. And I started, I said, what, I wonder what would happen if I do this. And my mama yelled at me from the stairs and said, Spencer! That was a common occurrence at our household. And I said, what? She says, don't you do that. It'll hurt. And I said, okay. And I set it strategically right in front of that outlet and walked away just long enough for mama to be out of sight. She was gone. And I went upstairs crying and said, Mama! <laughs> and, I, and she said, you put it in the outlet, didn't you? I said, no. I said, I was just walking by and it jumped out and got me. She didn't believe me. <laughs> I said, I didn't do nothing. It attacked me. And she, she didn't believe what I said at all. But you can tell a fool, don't do that. Do not do that. Do not, do not do that with your life. You, the pastor can tell you. Godly men can tell you. Your own husband can tell you. Do not do that. And guess what you do? You go do it anyway. Because the Bible says you're a fool. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 17, and let's go, let's go over verse chapter, chapter 23. Let's just skip over there real quick. Proverbs 23, verse number 9. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. You know, we did a, um, I did a little mini documentary on Greg Locke. Greg Locke was an independent Baptist preacher who has gone full-blown charismatic. He's preaching what I would consider damnable heresy. He's preaching that everything that's wrong with you is just a spirit that you need to be delivered from. And he even quotes Romans 10, 13. He says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. That's not what the Bible says. That's heresy. You may as well drop Greg Locke in the same category with the Pope. I dropped that documentary on YouTube. Greg Locke released his hounds upon me on Facebook. You have to realize I have about 10,000 followers on Facebook. Greg Locke has about two and a half million. So my phone literally was smoking with notifications. And Greg Locke himself got on there 
and said, if you release this documentary, I will sue you. I'm still waiting on that lawsuit. He doesn't understand that I have lawyers too. And my lawyers told me I was okay. Greg Locke got mad. And Greg Locke beat his chest and standing in his pulpit in, front, in his skinny jeans, cause, like an effeminate, and saying, if I'm so wrong on deliverance, come on down here and debate me. Come on down here and debate me. I'll pay you to come here and debate me. And people asked me, said, Spencer, are you going to go down there? The Bible says in Proverbs 23, 9, Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Can I tell you this? I've been around ministry long enough, and I've, I got, see, I got saved when I was 18, got called to preach when I was 19. My entire life for the past 21 years has been nothing but ministry, and I noticed something. You try to help people in churches, and you say, hey, don't do this. Guess what? They go like a moth to a flame, straight to what they shouldn't be doing. And they're always saying, but, but, don't date this boy. That's not God's will. Some skanky boy walks in church and tries to pick off all the pretty girls in the church. That's not God's will. I wish there were more daddies who, who were man enough to say, no, you ain't talking to that skanky boy. You ain't talking to him. No. But what do I know? And you say, no, that, you don't need to do that. And guess what? They go right to that. No, you, you, don't, you, don't, need, you don't need to quit your full-time job with benefits to do, do, go do some multi-level marketing thing. No, that's, that, you don't need to do that, sir. Amway is not God's will for your life. No, sir, you don't need to do all that. And they go and do it. They go and do it. And the Bible says that there is a point where to continue to counsel those people is sin. There comes a point, and by the way, they're always saying, but. You ought not cash out your 401k and put it in Bitcoin. But preacher, I, but I watch this, but, 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 but all the time. You know what, a, you know what they are? They're a goat. A goat's always butting everything. But, but, but. And the Bible says, don't give them your wisdom anymore. There was a point, Brother Bill, there was a point where Samuel stopped pleading with Saul. He said, okay. He said, you made a mess. I tried to help you. I tried to tell you. Bye. And the Bible says Samuel walked away from Saul and didn't speak to him anymore the rest of his life. He died not long after that. And there comes a point, people need to hear this too. There are lines with God. There are lines where you can just, you can butt against counsel and butt against the Word of God and butt against what, what the Bible is clearly teaching and you can butt and butt and butt and God just says, okay. The greatest judgment of God that can be had upon a person is when God hushes. God, the Bible says he chastises whom he loves. <laughs> Meaning you step out of line, God will let you, hey, he'll put you back in. How many have ever had that happen to you? Yeah. You step out of line, God will put you right back in. Like you step out of line, you keep stepping out of line, and finally you step out of line and there ain't no more of this. God will let that happen to you. The Bible says a fool, if you give wisdom to a fool, there comes a point where that's just sin. I was told years ago by older preachers, don't wrestle with a pig. Because both of you get dirty and the pig kind of likes it. And there's some pigs out there. Oh, Spencer, what do I do? Oh. Well, get out of your stupid church that plays all that homosexual Jesus music. Get out of that. Go leave it. They're, they're promoting this ooh, ooh stuff. At, okay, use our website. Go find a church. Okay, but it's 20 minutes away from my house. What, what am I supposed to do? Hold your hand, schnookums? 
It's okay. Twenty minutes is not that long a drive, schnookamookums. You know what they want? They don't want help. They want attention. They want some man to, to dote over them. Oh, it's okay. I know that you're making every stupid decision imaginable, and I know that your life is like a, a rolling train wreck, and, and I know that everything you're doing is bringing disaster upon your life, but I'm here to give you attention every step along the way. <laughs> Comes a point where I ain't got time for that. Comes a point where the best thing that could ever happen to you just lets you go off and ruin another marriage. Let you go off and, 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 and stop talking to you and let, your, let the next kid that you're raising in a stupid manner go off and be another fornicator. Just, hey, go, go, go feed your daughter to those skanky boys. Go ahead. I'm going to stop talking about it. There comes a point where giving counsel to a fool is sin. God didn't like that one. But the Bible says a fool is bullheaded. Let me give you this also, number five. The Bible says, and go to Proverbs chapter 18. The Bible says that a fool is a troublemaker. I put on here just for sake of alliteration because I'm one of those alliteration preachers that a fool is a bad-tempered person. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse number 6, a fool's lips enter into contention and his mouth calleth for strokes. A fool is a troublemaker. They start walking around the church saying and getting offended at every little thing. Brother Spencer didn't shake my hand. Well, because you don't wash your hands and you're kind of nasty. I don't want to shake your hand. Get over it. Brother Fred didn't, didn't talk to me like I, you know, he wasn't very nice to me. Well, he's a grappy old man. That's what they all do. I mean, that's just what they do. He's, he's, I'm not looking over there. Always starting something. Drama. Yeah. Drama. They're a drama mama. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 20, verse number 3. The Bible says, It is an honor for a man to cease from strife, but every fool will be meddling. They say, you meddling, preacher. Mm-hmm. The Bible says a fool is a meddler. And the Bible even says, it's in one of the Peter books later on in the New Testament, says he that would love life, let him seek peace and ensue it. Truth be told, here, here's something I want to tell you. I had somebody call me the other day and talk to me. And he said, you know, they're, they're teaching this, they're teaching that. And everything he was telling me, look, I'm against everything. Okay? I, I have a very long list of things that I'm against. But the things that this person was telling me that his church was doing, I thought was stupid. I mean, they don't pass the offering plates no more. So? I mean, I, I didn't like, I mean, I didn't really like teenagers looking at me and passing an offering plate to me. The less interaction I have with teenage boys, the better off I am. Amen. Leave me alone, weirdos. And he said, the pastor's too funny. He tells too many jokes from the pulpit. Well, I'd rather him be too funny than be boring, you know. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with that. It was, everything he was telling me was stupid. And I said, I think you're just a troublemaker. I think that's what, I think that's what you are. I think you need, to, you, need, you need to grow up, put your big boy britches on, and go be a mature adult in that church and just hush. Because the, the phone call I had before that was the pastor got caught up in some pedophile ring. And then you're going to talk about, well, the pastor's too funny. Well, at least your pastor's not a pedophile. I mean, Lord have mercy. What a bunch of trash. Drama makers, troublemakers. Go with me to Proverbs chapter 1. We'll land the plane here today.
I'll give you this. We're going to go to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20. The Bible says that a fool is a big mouth, that a fool is bad with money, a fool is a burden to their parents, a fool is bullheaded, and a fool is bad-tempered. That's five things that the Bible says in the book of Proverbs are the characteristics of a fool. And truth be told, if you're a fool and all those things are true of you, I'm going to tell you something, okay? Nobody likes you. You're, 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 you're a hindrance to the cause of Christ. You're a hindrance to the church. And what we need really is less fools in the church. But how do you, how do you, how do you stop being a fool? It's pretty simple. You don't have to go to Bible college. You don't have to be ordained to be a preacher. All you have to do is decide in your heart, I'm done with being a fool. And I'm going to start asking God for wisdom. You don't need an education. Wisdom is not some academic thing. Wisdom is a spiritual thing that can only come from one source, and that's from God himself. And God, the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not men. And if you want a boatload of wisdom, God will just dump it right on you. Won't even, ask for a, won't even ask for an invoice or a receipt. Won't even ask for a tip. He'll just give it right to you as much as you want. And you can have it and stop living a foolish life. You can make your life count for God. The Bible says here in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20, Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She, she crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and notice this, and fools. You see that? Fools hate knowledge. The Bible says here, and really this is the message, all the things I gave you right now run way up to this message right here. The Bible says, turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. If you notice the Lord, when he was dealing with the nation of Israel, he called the nation of Israel stiff-necked. Y'all ever heard that before? I went to Michigan. I got a friend who runs horse, like a horse boarding service. Went up there one time. And he says, you want to ride a horse? I hadn't ridden a horse since I was a little boy. I said, yeah. So he put me on this big old black horse and he said, all you got to do is just say, yeah, and it'll go. And that's all he told me. So I got on this horse and I, I grabbed the reins because that's what you do in the cowboy movies. And I said, yeah, next thing I know, I'm going 80 miles an hour. And I'm talking about, my, I'm, I mean, you know, that horse is, is beating me to death. And I, I realized we're running out of runway real quick. And I got scared. And so I did the only thing I knew to do. I, I, I was taught that when, when you want a horse to go this way, you grab the rein and pull it. Well, that's what I did. And I pulled that, I thought I pulled that horse's head clean off, just yanked it. And, it, and that horse went just like that and kept going. And so I said, oh, no. So I grabbed him the other way, just, just yanked that horse in, and he kept going. And finally, out of desperation, I just said, stop! And the horse stopped. And I looked back at my friend, and he goes, oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. This is an audible horse. You just yell at him. So you, you say right, and he goes right. You say left, and he goes left. He said, those reins don't do anything to that horse. I said, this horse is retarded. Whoever built this horse needs to be fired. He's broken. And truth be told, a lot of people today, you're going 90 miles an hour to destruction. And God's yanking the, the reins. You ain't stopping. God's pulling his heart, I mean, pulling on you. You ain't stopping. You know what God's going to do? God's going to just say, have it. But, verse 23, turn you, my reproof. If we just all learn to listen and say, I'm going to do what God says. I'm going to stop living like a fool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to rededicate myself to turn off the TV and I'm going to look at what this word says and I'm going to start doing what the Bible says. I'm going to quit living my life of destruction and, and, and I'm going to give myself to this. Then the Bible says you can have all the benefits and blessings of that. I don't want to be a fool. I got one life. 
and I'm afraid a lot of people are going to waste their life being a fool. I'm going to pray. Hey guys, we've got a spread shirt store available now, and we want to make you guys aware of this because some of you just may have not been around long enough to see this. But man, we've got all kinds of t shirts and merchandise for sale. Uh, all the Doctrine Matters designs that we have. Uh, we've got even like the cool video game that we played before our live streams. That's available on a t shirt and mug and everything. Also, our Flat Moon Society merchandise is available. You can put that on a mug like we have, uh, put it on hats, all kinds of stuff. The classic Doctrine Matters design that is available on in all shapes and colors and everything like that. I mean, we've got it on polos, we've got it on teddy bears, we've got it on everything. And then two God from Idols to serve. You better quit your meanness. Our Sam P. Jones line up there. Uh, I've really enjoyed that on a mug that I have. And then things are looking really good because things are looking really bad. That is actually one of our all-time best sellers right there. People have really enjoyed that. And then of course, I'm just here to be a blessing. We've got that on kids' clothes, we've got it on aprons, we've got it on hoodies, we've got it on hats. And I mean, it, just almost anything you can think of it's on there so hit the link below visit our spread shirt store buy some merchandise it helps support our channel and we appreciate you guys helping us out in that regard and don't forget guys doctrine matters and we believe that so much we put it on some clothes and we put it on hats and all kinds of stuff and i even have it right here on my shirt there so visit the spread shop store today go ahead and get you some stuff and this stuff ships very quickly and is actually very high quality merchandise you guys will not be disappointed i promise you you guys have a good day we love you see you later. Hey guys, your friend Spencer here. I want to talk to you about channel membership. This channel has turned into like a gigantic global thing. And we have so many things we're trying to do and we have expenses we're trying to meet and we need your help to do so. So YouTube has allowed us to be in something called the YouTube membership program. And that's what we have now where you can pay monthly to support this channel and just do it right through YouTube. And there's certain perks that you get uh, for doing this. And we want you guys to be a part of that. And there's so many things you get for being a channel member. So let me do this. I want to show you this, this uh, screenshot here. And this is from YouTube right on our channel here. And basically what we have is these five levels of membership that you could be a part of. Uh, one is $1.99 a month. Uh, two is $9.99 a month. Three is $24.99 a month. Four is $49.99. And level five is $99.99 a month. So level one is $1.99 a month. All you got to do is hit the join button on our channel and you get one of these loyalty badges next to your name and you get to use all these super cool emojis. Now, everybody who is a channel member gets to be a part of our super secret list of videos that only you people can have. Okay, we have, we have like so many good videos behind that paywall that all of you folks can have and be blessed by. You can have all that for just $1.99 a month. Now, once you go up to $10 a month, level two, uh, we will actually send you a free CD. And I've got CDs all around here that we use and we'll just send you one of them for free just as a thank you to that. And then also, if you join at level three, which is $24.99 a month, uh, then you get to have not only just a, a CD, but you get a book that we have. Now, what we have is we, we put on here sending our book, Calling Evil Good, The Live Christian Rock and Roll, which I have a copy of it right here. Now, if you want one of these, that'll be fine. We'll send you one of those. But we also now have the Dr. Matters Bible study journals, and you can have either one of these. So we'll send you one, no problem, just as a thank you for joining our channel. We certainly would appreciate that. And then also uh, for $49.99, you get all the books, the CDs, and then even we're going to try to send you some uh, some more uh, discounts on our spread shirt I items and things like that. We'll take care of you on that and we'll try to work something out with you. And then also level five, you get basically the same thing. So uh, guys, listen, this is a way that you get to be a part of what God is doing on our channel and get to be involved in all this. And so level one, you get all the loyalty badges, access to all the videos. Level two, you get all, everything mentioned before and a CD. Level three, you get everything and a book with a CD and all the membership perks and everything like that. And the level four and five, you get a lot of uh, spread shirt item stuff and all that. So all you have to do to claim all these perks is uh, once you join, just email us, spencersmithmembers at gmail.com, spencersmithmembers at gmail.com, and tell us what, what you want. Give us your name and address. We'll send it right to you, man. We'd love to have you guys be a part of this. We have so many special videos exclusively for our channel members coming up in the very near future. You don't want to miss out on that. God bless you guys. We love you, and we will see you all very soon.